Nation. Let's go. Welcome into DMVR Buffs Primetime. We are live from the Toyota Lounge, driven by your front range Toyota stores. Toyota is the official vehicle of DNVR. Happy Wednesday, bro. Happy Wednesday. I'm uh I'm fighting through it today. Bad night's sleep. Yeah, what's going on, man? I don't know, man. I honestly haven't had a good night's sleep all week. I'm usually a pretty good sleeper. Did your ear any better? Yeah. How many uh <laughs> different types of treatment have you tried? I've tried them all. It's probably time <laughs> oh, to go God. to another doctor, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> yeah, we'll save that one. Uh what's up everyone in the Toyota chat? As always, drop your questions that we will answer at the end of the show. Uh, quite a bit to get into today. 247's top 10 uncommitted portal players, Bear Alexander, staying at USC. What? I, I know, bro. We'll get into it. We, uh, I think we have an EA NCAA football or CFB football release date. Are we removing? We're, we're, we're not we're associated the with the NCAA. Taking that, we're cutting out the NCAA. It's called EA College Football 25. Interesting. I mean, what does the NCAA own that they would have to... I think that's the NIL issue. It was the NCAA versus whoever it was in that case that okay. basically d destroyed the game. We'll get into our top five spring storylines, but we start today with the bulldozer. Mm. Yaya Atia commits to Colorado from the NFL Academy in England by way of Egypt and Austria. Sheesh. 6'4", 330. Yeah. His name is the bulldozer. 330. That man is moving some weight around. Yeah. Um, I love this NFL Academy. I love these stories. Uh, I think it's so cool. And honestly, every time this stuff happen you know last year it's Kofi Taylor barracks mm -hmm. and you know once every I don't know once a year or so you hear about a player on a team who came from somewhere like not just a kicker or a punter from Australia right you know you're you're seeing global reach for NFL and you know just football as a whole and uh obviously you and I love this game a lot and I think the fact that it's spreading around the world is a really special thing. Um, I was actually talking to someone just the other day about this. Like the NBA and basketball as a whole was way ahead of this. Mm -hmm. um, having international stars certainly helps, but you know, you just look around now and heck, the top, maybe the top seven players in this year's NBA draft might all be not from America. Yep. Uh, and that just shows the way they've grown the game. And it's obviously always been a global game but especially the NBA has grown so much internationally. And I really hope that football can do this as well. You know, there's a reason why they're putting games in London and Brazil and Germany and, and things like that to just try and show like, it's uh, obviously it's something Americans love a lot, but I think when, it, as, when exposed to it, people all over the world can love this game. And yeah. it's an amazing game. So having the buffs like be able to get a player from Egypt slash Austria slash London mm -hmm. to come here. I just think it's so cool. And I hope there's more, whether it's for the buffs or just, you know, college football in general, more players that come and, and hopefully he's a beast and, you know, go, ends up going to the NFL. So there's this uh, article that was published today from the sun headline is I was born in Egypt and I'm going to play America and I'm going to America to play college football. My grandma wants me to be as big as Mo Salah. Do you know who Mo Salah is? Of course I know who Mo Salah is, bro. Do you? I, I just learned. Okay. <laughs> he uh, plays right wing for Liverpool and captains the Egypt national team. Yep. He's sick? He's, a, he's really sick. Big? No. I think what she means as big as... Like nationally? Yes. Like, yeah, yes story. As recognizable in the country. Uh, so we've got some quotes here from our guy, the bulldozer. He said, my grandma always said, I hope you're going to be like Mo Salah one day, but she doesn't know anything about the sport. I was born in Egypt in a small town where opportunities are limited. Growing up in Austria was a bit challenging because my parents didn't speak the language and I was still young. I'm the oldest son, so I respect my dad for letting me leave home and come to England. They told me I had to stay in Austria and go to university there, but I told them to believe in me and explain to them 
to give me one year and see how well I can do. When I got my first college offer, I was a bit sad because my, my family wasn't here and I couldn't celebrate with them. Then I got the second offer, and when I explained to my dad who Colorado were, he trusted me and I made the right decision. My friends convinced me to start engaging in sports to get, or quote before this, I was always one of the bigger guys. When I got injured, I had to stop playing soccer and got even bigger and heavier. My friends convinced me to start engaging in sports again. That's when I started playing American football for the Vienna Vikings two years ago. Um, back in Austria, I thought I was a good player because I was one of the bigger guys. A coach from the NFL Academy followed me and I posted my highlight. I didn't even know he was an Academy coach. When I came here, everyone was as big and as strong as me. He plays all over the offensive line. He says, I haven't spoke to Coach Prime yet. I didn't know that much, but I knew he was a professional at two sports and is a Hall of Famer. When I'm on the field, I feel like a bulldozer. Some of my friends gave me that name in Austria. Only a few, pe few people call me it. It's not even because of football. It's because I was one of the bigger guys. Well, <laughs> a lot more people are going to start calling him that now. Yeah, and we uh, watched a little bit of him before the show. We'll watch a little bit here. Mm -hmm. so he lives up to the name. Yes. He's bulldozing. He is violent. Yeah. Uh, he buried a kid's head in the dirt, <laughs> and we will show you that <laughs> very soon. But, um, I mean, I guess let's just get to the film whenever you're well, ready, Alyssa. What an awesome story. Yeah. Uh, and I, like I said, I love that the buffs are kind of tapped into this. Um, I assume he speaks at the very least three languages. So he, there's a video. Um, you quote tweeted it. I posted it on my Twitter, too, of him committing to Colorado. Yep. And he's speaking English. He does the, the Buffalo oh, yeah. Horn Sco thing. Buffs, he says Sco yeah. Buffs. Like, he's all about it right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, per perfect English. Um, Got to assume, you know, the, uh, the other countries that he's lived in, he speaks their native languages as well. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of people that come from those parts of end up learning, you know, German, French. Right. All, everything. It mm -hmm. blows my mind. When I was in, um, when I was in Belgium... Just talking to one of the person, uh, one of the people that worked at the hotel we were at, and I was like, "How many languages do you speak?" And he mm -hmm. like, he was like embarrassed to even say he's like seven. He's embarrassed well, to say he seven was, because he just knew it was like such a preposterous number. Um, and I was just like, "Dude, that's insane!" Like it makes me feel lame for only knowing like one and a half. Yeah. And he was You're just giving like, oh, yourself like, the half. I definitely know half. Okay, I'm a half. I'm half fluent in Spanish. All right. All right. Um, so, but he was just like, I mean, when, when you grow up here, like you might go to Paris for the weekend or you mm -hmm. can like take the train to London. Right. So like you just like learn all the languages almost like naturally. And I'm just like, that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, B's in the comments. Is he coming in the summer or next year? He's a 2024 commit. So he will be on this football team this fall. Um, I don't know when he's coming to Colorado, but. Sure, he's on his way. Great point from Louise, uh, who says what's cool is his dad and family will be able to see his football daily on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. just being able to follow well off, reach the people, the pregame show, even us. Yeah. Like, it's so different from a lot of the, um, you know, so the Buffs had a offensive lineman. Um, I'm pretty sure he's from Cameroon. And, like... They weren't able, pre-NIL, they weren't able to give him, like, any money to yeah. bring his family over for a game. There's very little, obviously, you can't watch the games on TV mm -hmm. where his family was from. And it was just like, man, like, that's so, that's so sad. Like, the way that things have changed, yeah. you know, it's pretty cool now that maybe, I don't know the rules, if you could do this directly to, like, pay for a flight <laughs> for them to come over. But you could do some sort of NIL collective thing where you could, like, get these international players families over for a game and and like louise said they're they're getting way more access than they would uh if their kid was going to any other school yeah great point um i don't know i guess i mean we do have uh, a player to compare him to and kofi taylor Bar barks i don't know if his family is able to come over but you've seen guys i mean cormani's family roderick ward's family like multiple families moved out here to colorado with their kid. alto alto yep yeah so i don't know we'll see that's cool I'm uh, I'm looking at uh, moving my season tickets, mm -hmm. getting better seats. And one of the spots where 
I'm considering is like right next to where all the families sit. And I was oh, like, this yeah. would actually be great. I yeah, love definitely running into all the players' families on game day. Like, like you mentioned, Rod Ward's family last year is yeah. like electric. Mm -hmm. uh, Dylan Edwards' family, we've had, you know, great conversations with. Obviously, Alto's mom came to the bar. We were talking with her. Like, it, I don't know. I love like being around those people. It's, it's great energy. Yep. All right, do we have the, the huddle tape, Alyssa? Yeah. This is from his first three games at the NFL Academy. Um, so just keep that in mind. Obviously, these aren't, you know, all Division I caliber players. There's only a few guys who make the jump from the Academy to actually playing in college. He's kind of playing all over. Um, he's the guy just burying someone there, plays right tackle a lot, plays center. I mean, drove another guy into the ground there. He takes a lot of people for rides 10, 15 yards down the field. Yeah. Lives up to his name. For sure. I mean, just throwing a guy right there. Dang, they, that screen should have gone to the house. There's a, I mean, look at, he just drops the yeah. ball there. Like there's some, <laughs> it's not great football, but you, it makes it, I guess, easier to pick out the standouts like him. For sure. I have to assume. He projects as a center. So just with the height. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. At six four three thirty, I mean three thirty is massive. Here it is. He's gonna bury this guy's head into the ground right here. <laughs> Look at him doing the headstand. <laughs> Guy got absolutely demolished. Um, but at six four, yeah, that's more of a guard interior offensive lineman profile. And at you know three thirty, he can be a real road road grader. You see him right there in a two-point stance, just burying another defensive lineman. I guess, you know, guard is, is on the table. For sure. Um, tackle, probably not. No, I don't think so. But obviously, you can see he, gets, he plays a lot of tackle for them. But look at his feet, man. He's coordinated. Like, this is an athlete. Yeah, man, for sure. And a lot, you know, a lot of these international athletes have that soccer background, which I think is great yep. for footwork and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, you Look know. Look at that recovery there, man. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, he moves pretty well for 6'4", 330. You, you, you know, you talk about, like, Nikola Jokic. Right. You ever see him just, like, juggling a bat, like, you know, the way that you juggle a soccer ball with your feet? Have you ever mm -hmm. seen him do it with a basketball? No. He can do it, like unlimited it's insane and then you wonder why he has incredible footwork that gives him a you know a leg right. up over everyone it's like he's been yeah he's been developing that like foot eye coordination and just ability to move his feet since he was a little kid yeah that's a great point i mean obviously a multi-sport athlete great point uh brought up in the comments by the way about because i was saying like they could do some sort of nil deal to hopefully bring his parents over for a game not to say his parents couldn't just do it on their own but um, Zach Eady brought up the whole thing about how international players can't currently earn from NIL deals. Which is a load of horse Super shit. lame, yeah. I guess based on the type of visa that they're granted to come over doesn't, like, factor in their, their ability to earn. Yeah, um, I don't know. Which really sucks. What do those emojis say, Alyssa? Great news about the commit of Atia. Oh, I mean, thanks. I guess I didn't break this, <laughs> but uh, I guess I was kind of the first on it on social. But yeah, this is from the uh, NFL Academy directly. You guys really should go check out the uh, commitment video on Twitter and just see how hyped his coach, how hyped his teammates yeah. are for him. It's super cool. No, I loved it. Even just the fact, like, I'm sure it's something they do for most guys, but, like, holding up the flags yeah, behind them. Yeah. And then everyone's, like, you know, give them hugs afterwards. Mm -hmm. It was that's, a, that's some good vibes for the timeline today. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of good vibes for the timeline, did you see the video that I made yesterday? Yes, I did. Thanks for the retweet. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I posted on Twitter the video... Of I showed my barber the video of Coach Prime complimenting my haircut, which, as I said to someone on there, that was actually a compliment for my barber. Mm -hmm. I just happened to be the one who received it, yeah. so I had to make sure that he got the compliment from Coach Prime. And uh, 
Guy was cheesing. He was cheesing, dude. I've never seen him smile like that. It was great. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Uh, let's move on. Shout out to our wonderful new friends over at Toyota. They've got a vehicle for any occasion, whether you're, you're adventurous and you want to go into the mountains, uh, go off-roading. They got four runners. They got all that stuff. The Tacoma. Or if you're more sporty, Supras, or you just need an everyday uh, vehicle, the Corolla, the Camry, they've got you covered on all fronts. You can visit your front range Toyota stores at a location near you. Auto Nation Toyota, Arapaho and Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora, Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota is a proud partner of CU Athletics and the official vehicle of DNVR. They'll get you where you need to go. It's true. We should probably flip these because I'm a proud Toyota I know. Uh, driver. We and should, you yeah. are the world's biggest Bet365 Bet 365. <laughs> I also love Bet365. Um, this might be a hot take. Mm -hmm. I think that we should start treating Masters Week like we do the first weekend of March Madness. Like, it should be normalized to just, like, not work. Fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. But, like, there's a, always a different vibe after the oh, cut. Oh, I mean, it's completely different. Like, it's not like the, the tension of the first round of March Madness on day one. No, no, there's definitely not that. But I love the Masters, dude. I absolutely love the Masters. I'm so excited for it to start tomorrow. So who do you got? So I will tell you who I have picked at Bet365. Um, so far, I have three. Okay. Three winners. I'm, you know, I'm looking to add a fourth see how things go uh, at the par three contest today mm -hmm. because uh, anyone who's ever won the par three contest has not won the Masters. Interesting. Okay. So can't bet them. Hopefully none of my guys win. Um, so I have Akshay Batia. Um, he won last week. He's also a lefty. Lefties notoriously do well yeah. at Augusta because there's a lot of draw holes, which is hard, but for them, they can just hit, you know, power fade. Right. Um, so I'm a big fan of his. I've got Tony Fee now. Um, you know, there's a lot of feelings out there that he'll never win a major, but he's mm -hmm. a great golfer and he bombs it. <clears throat> and then I have Sahith Thigala. Okay. Uh, who? You're you're composing the all name golf team. That's true. It's true. Uh, he's he's due. All right. He's 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 gonna be the next big name. Okay. Stay so By the way. I should tell you that I said that about Colin Morikawa before he became Colin Morikawa. Mm. And then we won a lot of money off of him. This guy knows golf. <laughs> so get over to Bet365. Get in on your master's picks. Uh, and also get in on our first bet safety net offer by placing a bet up to $2,000. And if your qualifying bet loses, you receive a matched refund in bonus bets. That's up to $2,000. But you don't have to bet $2,000. You can bet ten. But mm -hmm. if it loses, you're going to get $10 back. Well, of course, you must be 21 or over, physically located in Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. So with our friends from Bet365, we're doing our top five spring storylines today. All right. Um, I feel like there's a clear one. Okay. I think I know where you're going with that, and, and I think I agree. Okay. Uh, do you want me to go through all these right now? So we, what did we write down? Like eight? I have, yeah, eight. Okay, so we got to rank them one through five. Um, yeah, let, why don't you read them out, what we have, and then chat as he's reading them out. Throw out, you know, your quick rankings or, you know, your feeling, oh, that one's got to be number one. Or also just tell us what your storyline of the spring is. True. All right, so starting off here, Prime Weekend. Lil okay. Wayne, yep. Uh, the talent show, yep. Just the spectacle it's going to be on April twenty seventh. Yep. I got an email today about the talent show, and uh, it had a link on there that was like, if you're the talent, click here. I'm, Did you click here? I haven't clicked yet. Okay. Got. I, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Shiloh season. Yeah. A lot of Shiloh talk. We talked about him a lot on Monday about how it feels like he's. <clears throat> Putting the haters on blast a bit and is really, you know, he's going to cash in some receipts this year. Yeah. You know, you could say it's personal. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. The offensive line, DT2, 
Um, just everything with the offensive line. Jordan Seaton, how they're coming together, the battle at center. Mm -hmm. This one's probably definitely going to make the list. My only thing on that is how much have you heard about it? To me, the storylines is what's being talked about the most. Okay. Obviously, that's what we're talking about. That's what Welloff is talking about. That's what, you know, I don't know, if the newspapers, if they still make those, are talking about. You know, that to me is what storylines are. I feel like it's up there, though. I mean, it's a question that always comes up when we talk to the coaches or the players. Okay. All right. That's true. There has been a lot of questions about the offensive yes. line. And it's it, the question of the offseason, in my opinion. What's up, Jack? Um, the next one. Where is insert name here? Oh, wow. <laughs> that might be number one. <laughs> what up, Jack? Um, the next one. Coach Prime assembling even more NFL coaching experience in Boulder. This this is high. This ties in Warren Sapp. This ties in George Hageman. Yep. Um, this ties in Pat Shermer, Robert Livingston, whoever else you want to throw in there. Yeah. That, uh, you know, yeah, there's a lot. I think that might be my number two. Okay. Number three, DJ McKinney. DJ McKinney's been opening eyes. Um, <laughs> you could say that this kind of ties into where is blank. No, come on. <laughs> no. I'm just saying. DJ McKinney is... He's been getting his own pop from Coach Prime, specifically. The way he talks about him. Yeah, no, I know. Like the, I don't want to say the expectations, but like he's putting a lot on his plate right now, and it's because he believes in him. Why does everyone think the chat's about to melt down? <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. Number well, King Mars just started it. Why CSU colors? Uh, oh, don't do it. Don't do it to me. Please don't. It's Bet365 yes. colors. Yes, Bet365. Yes. We can't change these. Yep. Uh, the next one, LeJonte Wester. Big one. On the list for me. Okay. And then finally, Michael Welsh's arrival. And we can probably go ahead and put that in number one. slot number one. Michael yep. Welch. Uh, He's got everyone really excited. Yeah. And honestly, par I was, I wouldn't say I was brake pumping because I, two days ago said, like, I think he could potentially be the starter. Mm -hmm. um, I would, you know, he wouldn't be the favorite, I don't think, but I think you can see a path for that. But Coach Flea really pushed it over the top for me where it's like, okay, this isn't just like, oh, we happen to be seeing some really good right. clips on well off and the fans are running with it. Coach Flea put a stamp on him. Yep. Yep. Certified him. The dude went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Shiloh Sanders. Yeah. And won. Yeah. Like, this This is not manufactured hype. No, no. And, and like I said, the coaching, the coach is coming out and saying that is for real. And uh, also, you know, I, coach, I know Coach Prime has his fingers on this. So... Whenever whoever goes to the podium mm -hmm. is a, is telling you something. Yep. Um, so number two, then, what do you think is the second most, I guess, intriguing or engaging storyline of spring football? I think it is the coaching additions led by Coach Sapp. I think I agree. It's between that and the offensive line for me. Okay. I think. I go coaches. Um, it's one of those things where this is, again, being talked about, I think, more than the offensive line. Definitely. Definitely. And Coach Phil plays into it. So, like, he, yeah. he also is being, you know, discussed. Coach Phil, Coach J. Phil, lots of guys. Yep. So, number two, we'll go with. Uh, I would just say new coaches. Okay. We, you know, we don't have a lot of space on there. Okay. Number three, I'd probably say it's between the offensive line or LeJonte Wester. Because you had offensive line as a, a candidate for two, I'm, I'm willing to put it here at three. Okay. Um, you know, Jordan Seaton's involved in that. You know, the battle at right tackle. The center competition, 
And then now, I guess, even with our guy, Yaya Atia. True. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yep. yeah. Offensive line. What do you have be below that? Okay, what are we... S I think it's really open after these top three. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put LeJonta here. Okay. I... I mean... It was really early, but he, you know, yeah. there were some highlights that really popped. Um, we've we've been talking about, you know, his relationship with Shador mm -hmm. since the commitment, but then we talked about it again with Shador yeah. at the Super Bowl. But you're really seeing it kind of come to fruition here in spring. Yeah, I mean, until Michael Welsh really blew up, I think he, Lejonte Wester, was like not the breakout player, but the player just generating the most buzz from spring yes, football. I agree. Number five, how are we rounding out this list? We got Prime Weekend, Shiloh Season, Where is Blank? Uh, I kind of want to put Where is Blank. And so I'm, it's I. not that we're not saying Cormani's name. It's that it's not always Cormani. It's no. Where is Slusher? Where is Des Moines? Des Moines. Yes. Where is Where's where, Alto for some yeah, reason? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I kind of want to put that there, but then I feel like it's doing a disservice to Shiloh. Mm. And I think actually I might be willing to put Shiloh at, at four. LeJonte at five. Interesting. I could get behind it. I just feel like we kind of already know what Shiloh is. Like, we know he's one of the best, if not the best player on this defense. <clears throat> That's fair. I just feel like there's a different energy around it this year. Okay. I don't, I think that... I don't know how this happened. I think that Shiloh was underappreciated as a addition yeah last year and then underappreciated for his contributions on the field definitely i don't know if that's just because shador's the quarterback and so like you know people he just he's just talked about more and then i don't know i really don't know what the reason is but i think that there there's some weird ideas out there about shiloh that totally undervalue who he is as a player no, you're right. And that's why I think he's pulling out receipts and mentioning his missed tackle rate and his coverage grades and how many touchdowns he he didn't allow, which was zero. Mm -hmm. I think that's why he's mentioning all that. Let's go with it. Let's go with Shiloh season. At five, or are you with me in moving it to four? Or do you not want Alyssa to hate us? <clears throat> okay. I still think LeJonte is a bigger story just because okay. he's a new player. All right. I'll allow it. This honestly kind of plays into Shiloh's season. It's just like, it's not maybe, you know, he <laughs> might deserve to be higher. Uh, some, some good uh, um, thoughts in the comments about other ones. Uh, a lot of people saying where is, where is Cormani should go here. <laughs> um, also, uh, a lot of people said uh, the Trevor Woods saga. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. I'm like, I have to refill my... <coughs> Trevor Woods emotional energy tank before I go down that road again. <laughs> it's just uh, the Trevor thing is almost a non-story to me at this point because I feel like it's just a very vocal minority of this fan base who pipe up every time he gets mentioned. The the uh, last time we talked about it, yeah, yeah, put the poll in the comments and it was like seventy five percent exactly was, was you know pro Trevor Woods so exactly. I yes. think you're right. All right, I like that top five. There you go. There's our Bet365 top five. For we'll talk this to week. Uh, Bet365 about changing to black and gold. <laughs> yes. And Toyota. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just be glad that uh, we have the support of great brands like that. Of course. Of course. Oh, no. Elvin says DMVR is going on Shiloh's list now. Do we put him at four? <laughs> I, you know what? No. I, if, if we end up on the list, I'm blaming you. Do what you want. <laughs> what do you think, Alyssa? Uh, I think it's fine. <laughs> All right, Alyssa says it's fine. Uh, let's chill with our friends over at Coors Light. Coors Light, crisp, refreshing. You know it's time to chill when the mountains are blue. It's become really become my go-to beer recently. We have invited Shiloh, by the way. Yes, definitely. We've invited Shiloh. Uh, maybe one day. Yeah. Never say never. 
But Coors Light, come down to the DMVR bar, hang out with us, crush a few Coors Lights. We got the Silver Bullets. We got it on draft. Um, it is, I guess, technically baseball season. That's what the Rockies play. Yes. Go to Coors Field, <laughs> crush a yes. Coors Light, man. It's a vibe. It's also playoff season coming up for the Avs and Nuggets, though. Coors Light, in congruence with Coors Field, is probably the best part of baseball season here in Denver. Absolutely. Someone said... We're sleeping on Will Shepard. <laughs> he's not even here. He's not here. <laughs> he can't be a spring storyline when he's not even here. We will <laughs> yes. I'm sure he'll be a big fall storyline. Definitely. When it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer I reach for. When you want to hit reset, grab the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash DMVR. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Game time. Also, shout out to our friends at Game Time. I'm trying so hard not to sneeze. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you need last minute tickets, you got to go get them at Game Time. Uh, let's actually just look right now. Are the Rockies the Rock, are the Rockies at home right this week? Yes. All right, let's see what you can get a ticket to the Rockies game tonight on Game Time. Boom! Oh, I think they're home on Friday. Well, later this week. You can get into the stadium right now for 15 bucks, but here's the thing. It's only Wednesday. Wait until Friday. I bet you those things drop into the single digit yep. range. Uh, if you're going to a baseball game this summer, make sure you use game time. And if you're going to a Buffs game this fall, make sure you use game time. But no matter what game you're going to, make sure you use the code B-U-F-F-S Buffs when you sign up for $20 off your first purchase. I'm seeing seven dollars for Friday's series opener against the Mariners. There you go. I'm a all in pricing type of guy. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh just a few more little things to hit. EA college football twenty five. Mm. Give it to me. So I need to find this guy's Twitter account. Do we trust Dove Kleiman to break this news? Well, it depends on what you mean there, Jake, because if <laughs> he's breaking the news, it probably just means he's aggregating it from someone else. That is fair. <laughs> but he says July 19th. That's the big tweet that went viral today about this. No credit to anyone else. No, of course not. I'm I mean, going to say no, I don't trust him. <laughs> I don't think I do either. I don't <laughs> follow... All these accounts are blocked from my timeline, by the way. Really? Yes. You block the aggregators. Yeah. How long is your blocked list? It's only like 500 or something. 500? Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. So but I, I only... I told you this before. I know. You block anyone that puts out... Uh, no, no, no. It's not that. I used to block ads on Twitter. So I'd block brands. Wow, dude. And it wouldn't it show less ads until settings and privacy. Where would I find this? Privacy so, and safety. I always go if you go to notifications. You and block. There you go. All right. So I only recently started blocking accounts. I used to just mute them, but now Twitter makes it way too easy to see posts from people that you muted. And right. I don't have the self control to not click to show it to me. So now I started blocking people. I have blocked 31 accounts. I'm at 521. That's insane. That's insane. I also just started blocking anyone who says like racist shit under anything yeah. I say about the buffs or Coach Prime. I mean, this list went up by like 350 from last August. Yep. Damn, it's kind of fun to look at my block list and just be like, wow, I haven't had to see one of that person's I shitty know. tweets in months. <laughs> Anyways, he says, now I lost the tweet. July 19th is when this game is coming out, which would match up with the timeline that it usually comes out um, in previous years when the game existed. All right. My hopes are a little bit up, but I would prefer to see it from like Chris Fowler or something. Yeah. Chris Fowler put out another teaser video the other day. I did. I watched it. That was, cr I mean... I cannot imagine. I hope they get paid a lot for that. It sounds like they're putting in serious, serious work. I cannot imagine the work that goes into creating the voiceover. And honestly, the programming about around it is kind of really cool as well. Um, well there's times where I'm playing Madden where something really specific happens. 
And I'm just like, I cannot believe someone recorded that. Mm-hmm. That has to they have to get that has to take so many hours. And I hope they get paid a large sum of money for that. Yeah, full reveal coming next month. Uh, along with cover athlete, hopefully, could be a big news day. I will be so for happy. Us. Um, I mentioned this. Bear Alexander, or Hayes Fawcett actually put it out today, that uh, Bear, Alex- Al- Bear Alexander told him he's staying at USC after talking to the coaches. I hate it here. So this guy <laughs> didn't talk to the coaches, decided on his own he's going to the portal. Then he, one conversation with the coaches, he's back in. He's a few letters off. It does start with C O, but then it goes L L E C T I V E. After yes. talking to the collective, yes, I've decided to stay. That's a money. That's a money decision for sure. Uh, I, I mean, this is what ha- it's happening everywhere now. You enter the portal to like see your value and yeah. you go back to the school and you're you like negotiate uh old miss told me they'd give me 1.2 where you, i'll stay for one it's crazy it's insane did you see damian martinez was scheduled to make 400k at oregon state before he decided to enter the portal did you see did you think about how wild it is that we're just reporting those numbers now I, yes of course i did that's insane like it's just like being reported kind of like uh, like contracts in the NFL. Yeah, like a signing bonus. Like when that yeah. comes out three days after someone makes a signing. I couldn't believe that. And that obviously has to have come from Oregon State. They're like, yeah, we offered him 400 k Like we thought that would be enough. Yep. All right. So 247 put out a list today. Their top 10 uncommitted players as the spring window looms is from Chris Hummer. Uh, came out yesterday, actually. We've actually talked about a lot of these guys, too. But just a refresher that they're still out there. Number one is Takario Davis, the cornerback out of Arizona. Mm. So in this blurb... He's been in the portal a while. He has been. In this blurb, it says Davis has been a full spring participant for the Wildcats, and there's optimism around the program that he'll eventually withdraw. But he's still in the portal, which makes no sense to me how he's still practicing with the team. Yeah. I'm surprised that uh, they have enough money to run practices. (laughs) Yeah, you're diving deep on this. (laughs) Number two, we've talked about this guy too, Rashad Amos, the running back out of Miami, Ohio. Um, The little blurb here, Amos silently committed to Washington during the winter window, but backed off shortly after Kalen DeBoer left for Alabama. He's been in contact with Ole Miss, Arizona, Northwestern, Auburn, and K-State lately. Okay. Number three, Branson Hickman. Terry offensive lineman out of SMU, 6'3", 294. Was an all-AAC selection a year ago at SMU. Uh, Chris Hummer writes that he's a plug-and-play option for most teams. Um, Colorado's not mentioned in this entire list, by the way, but he said uh, he has seen Arkansas and TCU as the favorites for Branson Hickman. Okay. Number four, Corey Dykes. Ditches? Big difference there. I think it's Dykes. Corey Dykes, tied in out of Maryland, 6'2", 215. So a bit smaller guy. I don't know if CU would be interested in a smaller tight end. Mm-hmm. Uh, but caught 49 passes for 291 yards and two touchdowns last year. Visited Charlotte over the weekend. So, Okay. Romello Height is number five. 6'3", 230-pound edge rusher out of USC. Great name. Uh, was a 2022 recruit. He visited Miami most recently, Georgia Tech, Mississippi State. We've talked about this guy, number six, Marcus Bryant, the offensive tackle out of SMU. Uh, yes. Uh, the Horn Frogs are mentioned in this blurb, but seems like it's still kind of wide open. And he's been in the portal a month at least, maybe even two months. Yeah. 6'8, 318. Number seven is Jaquez Evans, edge out of Western Kentucky, 6'2", 250. Uh, was injured in 2023, only played in six, six games, but was very productive in 22. 13 and a half TFLs, eight and a half sacks, 106 total tackles. Georgia Tech and Tulane with the most interest. Number eight, Simeon Price, running back out of Mississippi State. Averaged 5.5 yards per carry the last two seasons. 
Entered the portal on November 15th, so during the season still. He's been wow. there half a year. Wow. What's his, what's his name? Simeon Price. Maybe the price just hasn't been right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He's scheduled to visit North Carolina once the spring transfer portal window opens. From Pensacola, Florida. Mark it down. Number nine, Javarius Johnson. Wide receiver out of Auburn, 5'10", 167, so it has to be a burner. Yeah. Listen to this. He led all Auburn receivers last year with 347 yards. Led all receivers? That's like 2022 CU <clears throat> numbers. That's Jordan Tyson. Like, Who's their he quarterback? Um, I can't remember. They almost beat Alabama. I mean, they they always turn up for that game, though. Yeah, that's fair. Auburn's leading passer last year, Peyton Thorne. From Michigan State? Uh, yep. Wow. Yep. Yeah, he, I think he was the starting quarterback for that first Mel Tucker year where they were like in the college football playoff consideration with Kenneth Walker. Well, he only completed 60% of his passes for 1,755 yards. Tough. It's tough. Uh, the final guy on this list at number 10, Christopher Ross, the edge out of Texas. I feel like we talked about him. Entered the portal December 19th, played in three games last year, suffered an elbow injury, removed from the Texas roster in October, but was a 2022 four-star recruit, 6'2", 255. All right. Let me just tell you, that whole list is about to change. Oh, yes. From top to bottom. Damian Martinez skyrockets to the top for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, I mean, even he might have to be scratching and calling to stay in the top 10 mm -hmm. a week from now. It's going to get real crazy. Yeah, it's going to get messy is what it's going to get. Yes, it is. Yeah, you thought uh, the winter was a lot of conversations about where are we headed? What's going on? Yep. Just wait. If you think the news has been slow recently, just uh, hold, on, hold on to your hat for oh, yeah, it's one week. By the way... Initial um, tease. Monday or Tuesday. Something really cool is happening next week. Yes. That's all I'm saying. Very cool. Very cool. Wednesday? Next week. Okay. <laughs> That's all I got. Let's go to the Toyota chat. Let's see what we have today. Travis asks, I don't know much about the NFL Academy. Is it comparable to like an IMG in the US? Uh, I think that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. I don't think there's very many other academies trying to, you know, go toe to toe with the NFL Academy in Europe, though. No, 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 no. And, and just, it's probably not as intensive either. Yes. But IMG, it, you're just a, you're just, a college student athlete when right. you go to IMG. Right. Uh, if not even more sports. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, yeah, the NFL Academy, they take players from all over the world, really, just outside of America. Uh, bring them to London, teach them the game, refine their skills, coach them up, and then hopefully send them off like uh, the bulldozer here. Hell, yeah. Hit the like button, subscribe to the podcast. And we'd greatly appreciate your five-star review on whatever platform you listen on. Trucking Cecil says, what position as of right now do you have the most confidence in? Quarterback? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in terms of a position group? Wide receiver. Probably wide receiver. LJ, do you think we get the D-line from the portal that went to Michigan? He's from Colorado. His name is Reese... It's Atterbury. Atterbury. Yeah, Atterbury. Let me look him up real quick. You're our uh, Michigan expert. Um, let's see. So this guy listed at six five three zero nine. Yep, from Aurora. I think we might have talked about him at one point. Yeah. Uh, played in all fourteen games last year. Um, let me pull up his stats. So last season for the Wolverines, if it'll ever load. 
He had only three total tackles. Okay. Um, Not sure if he's on, on even a target. Yeah, I don't think. I think we've gone beyond that level of player now. Okay. K Gizzle, RK. Do you think Coach Prime going to preview one new uniform look on spring game? Nope. I think that it'll be your uh, pretty standard, like practice style. Well, not practice style, but standard uniforms. It's a good question though, just because. Like, they are going to wear a uniform. So are they going to wear last year's to keep right. it a secret? Right. Uh, but I don't think they would. Uh, I don't think they're going to debut it for the spring game. Uh, CJ Swayze. Sweezy? Swayze? Swizzy? What is your guys' stance on the coaching st on this coaching staff not being as good as last year's? I think this year's staff is better, in my opinion. Uh, the staff is this year's definitely, I think, Look, you traded off a guy, you trade off Pat Shermer for like Charles Kelly, I think, in terms of experience, and then Robert Livingston for Sean Lewis. Both are very young coaches, but let's just see how it goes. You know, like it's really hard to judge them off anything other than resume. Right. Um, this year's staff obviously has a lot more NFL pedigree. Definitely, I think it's a deeper staff too. Um, just with the assistants and, you know, George Hageman's like director of like engagement and leadership or something yeah. like that too. So, but I mean, yeah, it's, I think in the end people are going to end up liking this staff more because this team's going to win more games. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Cam Duncan, how did, uh, bears transfer portal news get released? In the first place, if he wasn't planning on entering that strange, he told Hayes Fawcett. Yeah. I mean, he, he put it out there. Yep. So. And then he got his contract renegotiated, and now he's back. He got what he I saw the views on the tweet I put out. He got what he wanted from them. Yeah. Yeah. If you could renegotiate your contract every year, you would. Definitely. <laughs> Cam Duncan, how or that's the same one. Uh, Chase is asking, is Omar White coming or going? There's still been no Omar White news, man. I'd bet that uh, he's not on his way. You want to read it? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> With Jimmy back practicing, will RK stay Team Wester? You're Team Wester, huh? How, why, why, do you, would I, why do you hate Jimmy Horn, yeah. bro? Why would I be on a team? <laughs> I love Jimmy Horn. I have a Jimmy Horn t-shirt. <laughs> One of two players on the team who I have a t-shirt from their like NIL. Um, mostly just because this one was really sick. And then, of course, all, so is all of Shador's. Uh, I'm not on. Uh, I don't pick teams when it comes to my own team. Yeah, my team is the Buffs. Yes. Uh, T. Roche, where, where do you expect the defense to rank in the conference and nationally? Hmm. Upper half of the conference for sure. Uh, I'm trying to find some stats here. Hold on. I think they'll rank in the upper half of the conference. Nationally, I don't know. There's too many teams. Which stat do you want first? Points per game or yards per game? Turnovers? I don't think any... Anyone thought Bear was coming to see you for what it's worth <laughs> into the commenters points per game. Colorado was 124th in the country, 34.8 points allowed per game. Yeah. I mean, there was a, a lot of things that needed to be uh, worked on, but I think they will be in the upper half of the big 12. A total yardage 107 at 415.9, but you go to turnovers per game, and they rank 37th, averaging 1.7 turnovers per game. What am I going to get in trouble for? Ranking things. Um, the, and then someone said, I'm pretty sure they meant Jake being team. I'm not even going to entertain that. Okay. <laughs> Final um, one here. Here we go. Super chat from my guy, Adam. What's up? Jake and RK was awesome. Got to talk to Jake in Boulder yesterday after press conferences. Big fan. 
from Fort Worth, Texas. Love the show, fellas. Keep up the great con- content. Go Buffs. Thanks, man. Shout Good out to, to Adam. You. I'm one for one in my life and having great experiences in Fort Worth, Texas. Yep. <laughs> we'll would, 10 out of 10 would go back again. We'll be back. Dallas is sick. We'll be back there, too. Hopefully in uh, December. And we'll be back here tomorrow. We will be back here tomorrow. We got practice tomorrow. I do not know who we're talking to yet. Um, All right. We'll we'll be uh, tuned in. Or no, we got Coach Kevin Mathis. So I'm expecting cornerbacks. DJ McKinney for the first time? Yep. Travis. Do you think we get Travis? So then Preston Hodge? Preston Hodge, DJ McKinney. Stamp it. All right. We'll find out tomorrow. All Let's right. Go Buffs. Let's go Buffs. We all silly like the mayor.